Música Hey guys, Travis here again with Lucky Tackle Box. As we move into fall fishing, oh, there we go, yes. Guys, we move into fall fishing, these fish, they're up shallow chasing those schools of bait. And by using a medium diving crankbait like this Livingston Lures Dive Master 14, which was in this month's box, you can cover enough water to find these concentrations of fish, get to the depths they're at, and mimic the bait that they're feeding on. Here we go, come on, come on, baby. Uh. Oh man. So let's break down this fantastic fall pattern, starting with rigging. This crankbait is perfect for mimicking the prey the fish are after this time of the year. But something that's truly unique to Livingston Lures is their EBS technology, which stands for Electronic Bait Fish Sound. This bait actually emits sound underwater that emulates panic bait fish, which is pretty cool technology that's main purpose is to give you an advantage over the competition. Now I start with an eight to 10 pound mono or fluorocarbon. I like a thin diameter line because I don't want a lot of resistance in the water and that way it'll allow my crankbait to dive to the maximum depths and it'll also allow that crankbait to have the most action. Next, I spool that up onto a uh, medium speed gear ratio, like this Daiwa Tatula 6.3 to 1 gear ratio. And then uh, lastly, I pair that up with uh, a heavier cranking rod, um, like this Castaway DD22 Special. The idea is I still get the parabolic bend, so that nice even bend that I want out of a cranking rod um, to absorb those fighting fish and so they, don't, uh, they can't get the leverage to pull the hooks out, but also, I have enough backbone to really be able to huck this bait long distances. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go, baby. Here we go. See that rod? See that rod bending? That's what we want. When that fish is fighting, we want a lot of bend out of that rod to absorb those pulls. Oh my lord, look at this monster, dude. That's a crankbait fish right there. Wow. Wow, wow. Oh. For retrieval, I want to make long casts past my targeted areas and make five to seven quick reels to get the bait down to the bottom as quick as possible. And then I go with a fairly average speed retrieve. The most important thing is to feel the bait bumping along the bottom. As that bait digs into the rocks or any other structure, it bounces around erratically and that can drive the fish crazy. And with the added bonus of the shad sound technology from Livingston Lures, you have the double factor of sight and sound. By making variations to the speed of retrieval, you can sometimes trigger inactive fish. These bass are schooled up eating shad and other bait fish this time of year. So if you're near a school that isn't actively feeding, burning a crankbait through can elicit a reaction strike and can then fire up the entire school into a feeding frenzy. Something to keep in mind when you do catch a bass. These fish are schooled up this time of the year. So if you catch one, chances are there's more. So make repeated casts of that area from different angles. Oh, there we go. Another one. There we go. Yes. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. this one's a monster. This one's an absolute monster. Holy sh! Holy baby, this one's a monster. This one's an absolute monster. Do you see this one? Oh, he's got both hooks all in his mouth here. This is a bigger fish than I've gotten in a while. Oh. Are you ready to come in the boat? Are you ready to come in the boat? <laughs> no way. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> bounce it off the rock, bounce it off the rock, and then yeah, it's just, it's so amazing. It's like you don't feel the bite. It just all of a sudden just loads up. And I mean the proof is this thing is putting off those little shad noises. We're in the right areas. Obviously, I said if you catch one fish this time of the year, there's gonna be more in the area. And literally, the, the, the next cast catches a tank. 
This bay dives up to 14 feet. So my targeted depths are gonna be from five all the way down to 12 feet of water so I can make sure I maintain contact with the bottom. A good way to tell if you've been using this crankbait correctly is uh, at the end of the day, if the bill is all beat up and banged up. This thing coming out of the package, nice smooth round bill. If you're banging this thing in the rocks like you should be, uh, that bill should get real scratched and dinged up and that means you're fishing it correctly. There we go, there's the rocks. And let's just keep that thing going. It's down there, giving off those sounds, banging erratically off the rocks. There he is. I mean, it's like, eh, we can almost talk the fish onto the, onto the lure right here. A major thing this time of the year is to find the areas that are holding the bait. Bass are schooled up chasing the bait all over the lake, which makes for highly productive areas as well as very low productive areas. You wanna move around as much as possible looking for signs of activity. The easiest is seeing the actual bait fish, whether you see them schooled up shallow, feeding on the surface, or on your graphs. Some other signs are the presence of birds. Once you find the areas you believe have bait, look for the structure to fish in the area. That can include paralleling rock banks, throwing along docks, or over rock piles, and even logs can have bass waiting to ambush bait. Knowing that fish are schooled up in the fall and feeding heavily, it's all about covering enough water with the right lure like Livingston's Divemaster 14, and you can experience fall fishing like you never thought possible. Once again, guys, Travis here with Lucky Tackle Box. If you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel.